recursive method. How to write a method that calls itself uh, to achieve some goal. And the method that I want to write is going to be one that finds the factorial of a number. So I, I better remind you what factorial is, just in case you haven't worked with it for a while. If I say 4 factorial, uh, which I traditionally write with an exclamation point to mean factorial, so we pronounce this 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is, let's see, that's 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1 is still 24. So that's what I want to compute. Given a number, n, find n factorial, where that would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down to 1. So let's start writing that. Public, because I want people to be able to call my method. Static, so I can call it directly on the file. I'm writing in Java. Uh, I, I think everything we talk about in this video is going to really transcend Java, so don't get too hung up on the Java specifics if you're familiar with another programming language. Um, I want to return a number, so it will be an integer, and I'm going to call it call my method fact. So I'm finding the factorial of an integer n, and I'm going to make a note that it doesn't make sense. Um, that n, my precondition, is that n must be at least zero. Maybe that's not obvious that it has to be at least zero. It certainly can't be negative. We might think about whether it could be zero. Let's. Uh, Let's start looking at uh, how to write a recursive method now. So here we have fact n, and if you've been asked to write recursive methods before in school, you might have gotten to this point and then stared absolutely blank, uh, blankly at your blank page, having no idea how to proceed. Well, it turns out there's a sure way to proceed when you reach this point, and that is step one, write if this pretty much this is always going to work. Why? Why would writing if always be a safe thing to do? In fact, I'll write if before I forget. Why is writing if a good way to start? Because if it's recursive, if it's truly recursive, there must be at least two cases in my code. A recursive case, where the method calls itself, and a base case, where the method does not does not call itself. In other words, there must be at least one case where the recursion stops. That would be the base case. And at least one case where the recursion occurs. That would be the recursive case. So there's uh, step one. Step two. Uh, step two is handle the simplest case. The simplest case. It may be, may be that there's more than one simplest case, and in which case we might have to handle more than one, but handle the simplest case. What makes the case simple? It's simple if there's no recursion. Simplest equals no recursive call needed. Right, so it may not be simple at all. It actually may be, it's often the case that the base case, let's write this, base case is what we're working on. It's often the case that the base case is actually a lot harder to write uh, than the recursive case, but it's simplest in the sense that there is no looping, no further looping. No recursive call needed, in other words, no further looping. Now, when does that occur when I'm trying to find n factorial? For what value of n do I not require any looping? Well, 4 factorial would require a looping. It would require multiplying 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that's not a simple n value to compute the factorial of. What's the simplest n I could be asked for? Well, this requires some knowledge of factorial. You might feel that 1 factorial was the simplest, right? You might be thinking, well, 1 factorial, that's, well, if 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, then 1 factorial is just 1, so 1 factorial is the simplest. And if we wrote that, that would be pretty good. We'd be in good shape. Uh, but it turns out 0 factorial is defined to be 1. Here's a way we could reason that. 2, f if we take 2 factorial and divide by 2, we get 1 factorial, which is 1. If we take 1 factorial and divide by 1, well, 1 factorial divided by 1 is 1, and that gives us 0 factorial. I don't know if that was a helpful way of looking at it. Here's another way to convince you that maybe that 0 factorial really is 1. 4 factorial is the number of ways you can seat 4 people in 4 chairs. 24 different ways. 1 factorial is the number of ways you can seat 1 person in 1 chair, which is just take that person and put them in a chair. That's one way. 
Zero factorial is the number of ways you can seat zero people in zero chairs. How do you seat zero people in zero chairs? You set out zero chairs, and you seat zero people in those zero chairs, and there's precisely one way to do that, which is to set out zero chairs with no people in it. Anyway, a lot of math works out better for the fact that zero factorial is one, and including the method that we're about to write. So let's, let's make zero our base case. So if n is zero, then we're supposed to, how do we handle it? We're supposed to return one. Why? Because I said so. We're supposed to return one. I'm going to remove my braces so that more fits on the screen here. Since I only have one line inside my if, I know I can remove the braces. So we've got if zero factorial is one, no problem. And maybe often you've tried to rec write a recursive method and you've gotten that far and then you were stuck. So step three, what do you do third? You write the recursive call or calls. Write the recursive call. How do you know you can do this? Because it's a recursive method, it must have a recursive call. So we know we're going to have a recursive call, and we know it's going to be in the recursive case. So this is the base case. This is the recursive case. It's going to have a recursive call. What does it look like? It looks like I'm calling fact. Now, now we get to the question, what end do we pass? So we need to, um, on a slightly, in fact, I'll say on the next simpler input or state. So. For example, if we were programming the robot to walk to the wall recursively, the next simpler situation is that the robot has already moved a step, and now we can make a recursive call. Here, when we're trying to find factorial, we need to find the next simplest factorial. Okay, what's the next simplest factorial from n? Well, f the next simplest factorial is from 4 is 3 factorial. The next simplest factorial from n, a good guess might be that it's going to be n minus 1 factorial. And for a lot of our simpler, simpler recursive methods, subtracting 1 would be exactly the right thing to do from the input. Although in many cases we might divide by 2, we might do much fancier things, we might even multiply or add. Um, who knows? Alright, so find the factorial of n minus 1. At this point, we get to the hard part of writing recursive methods. The hard part. Let's, uh, so what do you do once you've written a recursive call? Because at this point you're looking at your code saying, huh, that doesn't do anything. We haven't achieved anything, and you're right, we haven't achieved anything. So, what is the fourth step? The fourth step is to assume the recursive call works. So it's just a mental step at first. Um, then we'll, we'll expand this. Assume the recursive call works. We have to pretend it works. Even though we know it couldn't possibly work because we haven't written any of the code yet, we will assume the recursive call works. Sometimes it might help you to imagine that you've asked a friend to compute fact n minus 1. You've been asked to compute fact n. Your friend has computed fact n minus 1 for you. You trust your friend, but of course your friend has only computed fact n minus 1. You were originally asked to find fact n, so you need to figure out what additional work do we need to perform. So assume the recursive call works. So some things to ask yourself. What does it do? What does your recursive call do? Well, in this case, if it works, then it computes n minus 1 factorial. So we have to know what it does. If we don't know what it does, we can't use the recursive call to solve the overall problem. Ask yourself what it does. The next thing we want to do is ask yourself, how does it help? Why, how does solving that simpler problem on a simpler input, how does that help to solve the whole problem? One thing that I find often very useful is if I'm making a recursive call, and I know that call returns a value, and here I know I return an integer, I might store the return value in a variable. And I like to call my my value result if I can't think of anything better. So to store the return value in a variable. Let's in fact let's make a note here. Maybe store result in a variable. The recursive call result in a variable. So how does it help me? How does having knowing n minus one factorial help me find n? Well for that we need to know a lot about the specific problem I'm solving. So let's look at factorial more closely. Suppose that I tell you, suppose that I, t well, we know 4 factorial is 24. Let's try to find some others. What's 9 factorial? Do you know what 9 factorial is? Come on, you know this, right? Really, you don't? It's 362,880. Shame on you for not knowing 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 would be that number. 
Okay, I don't know why I'm even going to bother asking this, but do you happen to know what 10 factorial is? You do? It is 3,628,800. How did you know that? If you knew 9 factorial, how did you know 10 fa How did you, if you didn't know 9 factorial, how did you figure out 10 factorial? That's right, you knew that 9 factorial is 9 times 8 times 7, maybe I should have picked a smaller number here, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and you knew that 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and you realize that if you line this up in just the right way, you realize, hey, 9 factorial is part of 10 factorial. So really, 10 factorial is 10 times 9 factorial. And we can use this idea. This is a recursive definition. 10 factorial is 10 times 9 factorial. 10 factorial is defined in terms of 9 factorial. Therefore, n factorial, for any n greater than 0, is going to be, that's right, n times n minus 1 factorial. That's a recursive definition of factorial. And that's excellent because what we were asking ourselves was, how does it help to make that recursive call? Here our recursive call was computing n minus 1 factorial. And if it really computes n minus 1 factorial, and I know we haven't written any of the code and it's bugging you like crazy that you know it doesn't really compute that because we don't actually have any code written yet. But don't worry, it's going to work. We've already computed n minus 1 factorial. How does that help? Well, it helps because we know if we take n minus 1 factorial and multiply by n, we'll get our answer. Take n minus 1 factorial, that's result, multiply it by n, and return that. Does it work? Well, let's find out the old-fashioned way. We'll just try it and see if it comes out right. Uh, let's see, recursion is the name of my file, fact is the name of my method, I want to find 10 factorial. 3, 6, 2, 8, 8, oh, oh, look, that's the number we wanted. So it works, or it appears to work at least on input 10. We'll explore this in more detail in the next video. I will see you there.